This is a small DeWalt compact stand. So it's just like the other ones, but it's not as long. So I'm gonna try to mount that planer right there on this using those mounting brackets. So we'll see how it works. Now I'm gonna mount it so where you feed the board in, it feeds in line with this extrusion here. And I can still use these supports that typically go on there. Now I don't use the planer a whole lot, especially on site, but it's just something I've always wanted to do. I've always had this idea. And when I do use it, I use it on my little Craig table, but I no longer have that. I actually gave it to John. So we're not going to be having that on the job sites anymore. I actually didn't like that Craig table. Uh, it was just too bulky and awkward, but I'm going to try to make some use out of these stands now that they've kind of been eliminated and let's see what we can do. So to give you an idea of how much smaller this stand is than a typical one, there you are right there. The reason I bought this compact one, I was trying to be really minimalistic as far as tools went. And I just had my saw set up here and then a roller stand on each side, but I quickly found that was not ideal. I've been through a lot of changes over the last 10 years and it's been a journey for sure. Now, obviously the planer with the brackets will attach to either stand. I was just trying to show you guys this small stand because some people would probably ask like, why is that so short? I think it'd be a cool compact planer setup. So the first thing I need to do is lift this thing up there and see how it's gonna look with the brackets. So if I want it to go in line with that, let's do it like this. So then I can have this set up here and it would obviously be elevated up a little bit because of these brackets. And I could use that typical um, DeWalt support that's out there on that arm and that can kind of support the board. Or I could come up with a better, like longer platform to support the board out here. But really with the planer, all you need is something like an in feed and an out feed. So you don't have to have like all this space. That's kind of what this is for. So looking at this, let me see what I can do. All right, this might work. All right, so here's a look at the bottom of the machine. I've been looking at this for a minute and here's what I've come up with. There's these four places where they have these hex bolts in all four corners of the machine. Now I don't want to mess with those because that would mess with the adjustment of the thickness on this thickness planer, which would be a bad thing to do. So I'm just gonna leave that as it is and not mess with that. Not only that, I was looking at the bracket. The bracket's not even long enough to span from bolt to bolt. You can see we've got a bolt right there and there's it's nowhere close. So that's out of the question. The next thing I looked at was drilling into this material here and that's out of the question as well because that's actually the surface that the wood slides on. And I'm not gonna mess with that either. That will create another set of problems. So here's what I've come up with. If we set this here, you can see there's a gap here underneath it, but it actually is supported evenly. If you look at it from this side, it's setting on the metal there and then it's setting on the metal there as well. So it'll be flush across. That's not a, a problem at all. And I have enough meat to bite into here to drill in through there, there at that location. And also over here, now I'll split the difference and see what I can make it where it's equal. And then I can drill through here, which I don't think it'll affect the structural integrity or operation of the machine at all. And through there on that other side as well. And then drill through this bracket and then bolt this down right here and kind of squeeze it in right there. So that's the plan at least. I'm gonna give it a shot and see if I can make it work. And I'm gonna clamp this thing down and drill all the holes at the same time. So there's no question of like, if it's gonna be the right fit. But one thing I need to make sure of is that wherever I mount this one, I need to mount this one in the exact location because when I go to set this on the stand, that will not work if it's not 
So let me get started on drilling these holes. Thankfully, I have a fresh bag of hardware here that goes to these DeWalt brackets, and I'm just gonna use this to mount them to the planer. So here's a look at what I got right here before I drill it. One thing that just crossed my mind, hopefully this is not a problem, is the stand is gonna be right here where the bracket grabs it. And that's a lot of weight off to the side over here, but I'm just gonna try it anyways. So here we go. Hey. That'll work. That will work indeed. So it's not too low, even if I needed, or even if I wanted to use the lock washer with the longer bolt, I think the height right there is perfect. And you can see this carriage bolt right here is not letting it sit flush. So I'm gonna have to uh, kind of countersink that. I don't have to use a carriage bolt, but it's all I've got right now. And I wanna just go ahead and get this thing done. So I'm gonna just countersink that a little bit. Okay, next one, I'm gonna do the same thing, drill it at the same height. Looks like I drilled that one 3 eighths down, right in the center. So here's a look at our first bracket installed, at least prior to tightening the nut and bolt. And I think it looks pretty clean, I think we got enough bite right there to hold that. I don't think that's going to be an issue. One thing I think that's going to be an issue though that I didn't really think about is this kind of a tilt motion since I'm mounting it to like a side wall and not down. Hopefully when I tighten this it kind of just squeezes that and maybe it'll do the job. That thing right there is actually pretty solid. I think this is gonna work. It doesn't have that tilt motion anymore. The whistle of approval. So to get this next one squared up, I'm just gonna reference the square edge of the machine right here. And then put this uh, big drywall square up against the, uh, the bracket there and then that should give me the location of this one. So basically just using a square to get this mounted correctly. All right, you guys are about to find out that uh, I haven't been using that weight set back there so try not to laugh too hard. What the? Probably not the safest <laughs> setup. Okay, how is this gonna work now? What? What? It's super stout too. Wow, that's actually pretty slick. And it's like perfect height, like belt height. What? That's awesome. You can see it's mounted exactly like the miter saw as far as the way the brackets grab the stand but obviously the way the brackets are mounted are with those uh, bolts and nuts that we just installed and drilled for. So I think this is actually a pretty slick setup and we'll go ahead and take it out into my yard over here. I'll throw some little supports on these arms and I'll just run a, uh, I'll run a Windsor one board through there. We'll take the primer off. I should have one in a pile around here somewhere. So I just moved the planer from the garage over here to the cut hub. And that's a pretty good testament of the cut hub right there. It's holding that thing up really good. Just thought I would mention that. I set it on here so I wouldn't have to bend all the way down 
to uh, pick it up off the ground. This thing here is uh, 92 pounds or 42 kilograms. So it's pretty stout. I think the, uh, the sketchiest part about this thing is that right there, getting it on and then taking it off. Like when I took it off in the garage right now, it was just a little awkward. And I think I have the perfect solution for this too. Maybe. This is insane. This is gonna be like a dream setup for the planer. Wow, that is crazy. The offset of this little jig. So this jig right here, I'll show you up close in a minute, actually modeled off the crown stop jig that I made that I've been cutting crown on with really for the past six or eight months. That's crazy. And then this version of the jig was actually made by Glenn. He's actually the creator, inventor, and patent holder of track tubes. Right, let me see if this is level. This is crazy. Ah, so it's not gonna work. I can come up with something though. So like I mentioned earlier, the planer itself is hanging off a good amount to the left of the stand there, but that would actually work out perfect because this track tube here would be in line the same way because it's on the same kind of bracket system. So that would work. I just gotta get it lower, but this would have been awesome because you can see Glenn who invented these track tubes. He made these for me, they're adjustable. And he has a lot of ideas that you can make with these track tubes that has this knob. And then I was hoping it would get low enough to where it would go in line with that infeed table. But it's not looking like that's the case, but that would have been cool. And you can do it on both sides and uh, get it exactly how you want it. If I can get something set up for the in-feed and out-feed support, this will be a dream planer setup to go with my dream saw setup. So, pretty cool. All right guys, so that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks for hanging out with me as I modify my tools. So there you have it. The DeWalt planer will mount to the DeWalt brackets and you can throw it up on one of your DeWalt stands if you want to. Pretty cool stuff going on. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.